road to Elgem, ancient Thistris. You are surrounded by flat terrain. It's almost entirely olive trees. And what was the wealth that led to the grand city of Thistris? It was agriculture. It was a marketplace, a crossroads destination. And of course, they were producing grain, they were producing olive oil, and it led to wealth that led to great constructions. And the end result in the early third century AD is this amphitheater. The amphitheater of El Gem is the largest, most magnificent amphitheater in all of North Africa. Great to be back in El Gem. This is the pride and joy of North Africa in terms of amphitheaters. It is spectacular and associated with a very poignant moment in the third century, the revolt of 238 that led to the crowning of Gordian, the Emperor Gordian I. Ancient Thisdris, very important city, one of the great cities of North Africa, and in terms of modern day Tunisia, it, it's the big city after Carthage. And this is what they leave behind from this city an enormous amphitheater. This magnificent amphitheater, it reminds you of the Colosseum. And we can do a lot of comparison because there are a lot of similarities in size and scale. Now the circumference of this amphitheater is 427 meters. The circumference of the Colosseum is 545 meters. The arena floor that we're looking at, it's 64 by 39 meters in comparison with that of the Colosseum, 84 by 54 meters. The external axes are 148 by 122 meters compared with those of the Colosseum, 188 meters by 156 meters. The full height of the Colosseum is about 50 meters. The full height of the amphitheater in El Gem was about 36 meters. So it is a large amphitheater holding approximately 30 to 35,000 spectators compared to the much larger Colosseum 50,000 spectators. And there's so many impressive ruins and remains. How many times can you go through the ancient Roman world and see an amphitheater with three stories preserved? Have to go to the Colosseum? You have to come to El Gem. All right, let me, let me take you inside the Hippogeum. Let's go. Down these stairs. Down below here you have men working capstans, hoisting up on elevators, gladiators, and wild animals. Not as extensive as the Colosseum, but it is nevertheless a very impressive hippogeum. And up above here, you can see what would have been covered originally in wood, and then parts would be removable, and up you would come into the arena floor. Side corridors, get the idea of where People or animals were in holding cells, waiting their turn to be brought up. So in the center here corridor going in two different directions as well as side corridors. Pretty impressive set of tunnels underneath this massive amphitheater.
slide into the arena floor. Some places you even have the wall that was once lined with marble, with the marble intact. You get a great perspective of the uh, arena floor, the hippogeum, and a lot of the seating still preserved. So down below there is the second layer. I'm on the third level, which gives you a pretty extraordinary view. And then here's the rarity of uh, the amphitheater in LGEM. You can go up to the fourth level like you can in the Colosseum, so it's pretty rare. Let's go up. It's beautiful yellow sandstone. And then from here, you can see today how this amphitheater still dominates the landscape. It's the tallest structure for miles and miles around. One added bonus, a little higher up, at the tippy top. The nosebleed seats. This is a very, very large, impressive amphitheater. The amphitheater of El Gem is something so spectacular, especially from this vantage point. And what you have is something fully original, not just a copy of the Colosseum, with its Corinthian capital exteriors, story by story. It's got no foundations, it's freestanding, and it's used in its construction with the Punic foot versus the Roman foot. Why does it survive? In the Middle Ages, it was used as a fortification to hold off the Vandals to hold off the Arabs in the 7th century. And fast forward to 1695, and you had the Revolution of Tunis. It was decided to dismantle a huge section of the exterior wall. So it couldn't be used as a fortification anymore. And here it stands today, so well preserved. An incredible example of the reach of Imperial Rome.